Guillermo Galván. I am from uh, Guadalajara, Mexico. Uh, yeah, it is kind of early. <laughs> Sometimes I got some meetings at this time. So there, there is no problem. It's, it, I like this kind of, of, of things of doing uh, some tags. So well, today uh, I'm going to show you uh, a tag about canary control with Go, Kubernetes, and Istio in order to do some traffic management. So today I'm going to show you use uh, well through, uh, through the concepts and also I'm going to show you a, con uh, a demo of how all of these technologies interact. Okay. Ah, well, this is uh, the schedule for today. Uh, today, um, I'm, first I'm going to talk about the demo that I'm going to show you. Uh, then uh, I'm going to explain very brief about uh, Kubernetes API, uh, the resources, also uh, how Go is uh, being used uh, on, on the API for Kubernetes. And also uh, we are going to use a technology called Istio. So I'm going to explain also about uh, this technology. And then on the last part, uh, just a, a little brief about controllers and then the final demo. Also, I'm going to show you some uh, code exercise while I am while I am going to show you uh, how uh, the Go language is used for this. So, well, let's start with about the demo. Uh, well, the demo is just uh, a system that the thing that we'll do is to deploy two versions of application. And once the two versions are deployed, um, what I'm going to do is to split requests from the user. How I'm going to split them uh, by percentage. So one percentage of the traffic we go to the version one and another we go to the version two. In order to do this, uh, we are going to use an orchestrator such as Kubernetes. Right now I have it set it on Google Cloud thing. So it's just for the demo. And then also I have already installed their Istio. So for Istio, uh, we are just looking for the traffic management uh, uh, solution that we requires uh, three three resources for it. That is the gateway, uh, virtual service, and then the destination rules. So, well, this is just an overview of the final demo. Uh, in order to explain uh, each, each of the components, I will go uh, with code to deploy each of everyone. So let's continue. So well, um, in order to understand uh, uh, what we are going to do, first we need to understand all tools. And one of them is called the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, the Kubernetes cluster is made of a bunch of, of nodes. One of these nodes is the master node and the other one is the worker node. Uh, on the master node, uh, we have uh, some components that, that are part of it. The first one is the controllers manager. This piece of software is on charge of, of, is of the control of the system and also to set the desired state that the system requires. So for example, uh, if the system requires uh, a deployment we with uh, three replicas, then uh, the control manager is going to be on charge of that. And then we have a database for that, the ATCD, who's on charge of the of, st of storing the, all the configuration and also the, the desired states and the, that needs to have the cluster. And then we have something called the scheduler. The scheduler is a software, a software sorry, that is already smart to to set uh, where the pod is going to run on which node. So it's going to allocate to the right node, uh, the pod and the container. And then we are going to focus on this component that is on yellow, that is the API server. The API server uh, is the one that serves the Kubernetes API and the entry point for uh, commands and also for for the worker node. So for example, like we can see on the image, we can interact with the API server by using the command copcodal. And also we can interact with it uh, by doing some um, cool commands like, like interacting with an API. So we, I'm going to explain that in the next uh, slices. Okay, this is about the Kubernetes API server. Um, 
as I, as I mentioned, the API server is the central management entity in Kubernetes and serves as the main interface to the Kubernetes cluster. So the API server acts as a gateway to the Kubernetes cluster. Also, uh, is responsible for checking who are and what you are allowed to do. Also, it can be, uh, it allows custom resource and extensions, which means that you can add more functionalities as needed. Uh, well, in, uh, think of it, the API server as the front desk of the Kubernetes system. When you want something done in the cluster, you will pass your request to the front desk and then it ensures that the request is valid, allowed, and then properly executed. In this image, what I want to represent is that uh, you are actually doing some calls to the API server. Uh, actually, like it were well, like a uh, API uh, REST. So let's see on the following. Like for example, um, if we want to take a look uh, the the API, we can do it by running the next command uh, with the proxy, and then we set the port where we want uh, our proxy running. This proxy uh, will act uh, as for communicating between the API server and our computer. If we do that, we can take a look to the API server. So, well, it's already here loaded. As you can see, uh, we hit a uh, at first time by using just a simple call, a get to the API server. So well, uh, this is just uh, some terms that we need to know before we go through the code and before uh, go going to do something because it's going to give us uh, the knowledge of how is structured the API. Uh, first things first, uh, we have uh, in the API the kind. Uh, when you define or create an object in Kubernetes, you specify its kind. The kinds tell Kubernetes what type of resource you want to create. Uh, for example, if you already worked with Kubernetes, uh, there are kinds that include pods, services, or deployments. Then we have something called the API group. Um, Kubernetes has multiple, multiple API groups to categorize its resource and functionalities. Uh, these organizations allows the system to evolve without cluttering or complicating the main set of functionalities. So we are going to look this uh, in the next slide in order to make sense of it. And then we have the resources. Uh, the resources are specific representations or the endpoints with an API group that can be interacted with. Uh, um, think, of, think of them as a noun that you can take action on. And then finally, we have the version. Uh, this one is easy. Uh, the Kubernetes API is versioned, which means there are different versions of the same API that can coexist to allow for evolution and change over time. So you first uh, version your API and then you interact with the resources. So in the next uh, slide, I'm going to show you what, that, what this uh, theory means. So the way it is structured, uh, as you can see, if you want a group from the group batch and then version V1, and then you get a resource called jobs. That is the one that you can schedule and, and synchronize some uh, pods and Docker containers. So uh, if we take a look again to the file uh, that we did for the API, we can see that we have a lot of resources uh, under that uh the data scheme for example we have the api v1 that has deployments also it's near here um well it's well we have that here then we have some custom resources such as Istio too that we are going to see them uh later so if we can ah okay uh Actually, I have also an example where we actually do a call in order to create a deployment. Um, let me see if I have it here. It's here. Uh, this is an example where I can create the deployment by doing a call. Uh, the, the call that I'm going to do is a post. And then um, this is a... Uh, 
First of all, it's going to be from the groups apps, version B1. Uh, this is the namespace, in this case it's default, where it's going to be the deployment and then the resource. And then uh, the information that we take is the information related with the deployment. In this case, it will be a, de a deployment that will run Nginx. Um, and well, it's, go it's going to be in the port 80. So if I send this, uh, well, let me ensure that our process is running. Okay, it's running. Let's do this. Okay. Mm, no send. Let me check again. <laughs> Hmm. Okay, for some reason <laughs> it's not sending, but well, the main result will be the, the creation of that deployment. So let's continue with this and later uh, we can try it. So, okay, here is where we go to the main part of the talk, that is the interaction of, of the Kubernetes API by using uh, Golang. So right now, uh, the Kubernetes has already some uh, uh, official libraries in order to do that. Uh, first, first of all, we have uh, the client Go library, who his purpose is uh, to interact with Kubernetes closing, cluster using Go, uh, where you can create, create, update, delete, and also list the Kubernetes resources. And also you can do another operations. Also, it's worth to mention that has the client in order to interact with the cluster. Then we have two more libraries. Uh, we have the API machinery. Uh, this library contains the all the machinery to create the Kubernetes style, style API servers, but not actually the API implementations. The ones who has the API implementations is the other library that we have here that, that is the Kubernetes API. So this is like an overview of, uh, of the libraries that interacts with, with Kubernetes. Now uh, let's see an example with the code in order to, to play with it. So in this example, we are going to start creating our uh, piece by piece or demo. Uh, as you recall, uh, we we were having a deployment with with the versions and also the Istio components. Uh, this time we are going to create use a, a small uh, deployment of, of the version number one. On the right side of, of the screen, we have uh, how it will be defined like a jam file, like by doing with the curry command, right? And on the left side is what we are interested in, that is how to do it with, with code, with, Go, with Golang, sorry. So the first part is to define the libraries, okay? Uh, we define uh, from the API library, uh, the objects related with apps and also with, with the group core. Uh, inside of these uh, groups, we have uh, some resources. In case of core V1, we have, uh, are related uh, with the services, if I recall what, no, with the bot, and in the other one for the deployment, that is for the apps V1. So uh, this is the first part. We uh, we set our, our libraries. Uh, and well, one thing worth to mention is that depending of the version you use, it's also the, the version that you, you will be Use for the Kubernetes cluster. So you have to match this, the Kubernetes cluster and also the version of your library. Uh, right now I'm use, uh, using the latest uh, libraries so and the latest uh, version of the Kubernetes cluster, so there will be no problem. And well, the second part is uh, this part where we first uh, get our configurations. In this case, uh, I'm getting the configuration for um, uh, environment variable. Um, then that configuration, I'm passing it to um, uh, this method, new for config, that is the client set. This client set is the one that will allow us to, to deploy our first resource that is a deployment for Kubernetes. So uh, this is the part of the code that we will be using that. that and as you can see, it's part of the client Go 
a library, this part of here. And well, in order to do that, as uh, we are going to create an object for deployment, uh, that object can be uh, built from the FB1, apps V1, that is from this library that I mentioned, from the API Kubernetes library. And then we start to build it. It's, it's very easy. You just uh, fill the, all the information needed in order to have it. As you can see, uh, for example, ah, okay, for Meta, we use uh, the uh, API machinery. This is like some pieces of the API machinery will be also embedded inside of the object. In this case, is the all the object metadata, for example, name and labels. And then uh, for the deployment spec, we define uh, the number of replicas, also we define the selector, et cetera. So the same thing that we have here, we define it uh, with objects, and then we go through the part where we deploy the, the deployment. So this is uh, the, the way that we do it uh, by using the Tango only, and using the Kubernetes API also. So we use uh deploy this is inside all deployment ribbon. We use bottom main of it works. Um okay, it, it mentioned that it was deployed successfully. Let's take a look through to the console in order to see if it, if it is true. So if you we go here. Okay, so it's, it's taking some time to deploy, but it's there, as you can see. So there are two deployments for that. I'm going to do it. Uh, also for B2, I'm going to do the, the same thing. Uh, it's the same code for B2. Uh, it's, it's the same structure. Uh, we have the, uh, the same uh, client and go and also the object just i'm just changing the version and also the name of the deployment so let's do this okay so seems to be working too so let's go to the next part of the slides Okay, this is just about Istio Basic. We already deploy uh, just the native components from, from Kubernetes that is uh, a deployment. Now let's go through the others that are not part of Kubernetes that is Istio. So about Istio, um, well, Istio is a service mesh that provides a framework for building microservices applications. It offers features such as traffic manager management, security, and also observability. Uh, for the case that we are going to use Istio is for traffic management. Um, internally, uh, Istio uses a file cap pattern where each port in the service mesh has an associated Envoy sidecar proxy. So all the traffic entering and leaving the port goes through this proxy. This allows Istio to enforce policies, uh, collect metrics, and direct traffic based on their predefined rules without changing the application code. And uh, well, there are three components that we are going to use for that. Uh, the first one is the getaway. Uh, the getaway, well, think of it as an entry and exit point. It defines how incoming and outgoing traffic should be handled. Also, the second one is the destination rules. Um, once traffic is routed to a service, destination rules define policies that are applied to the traffic to that service. And finally, uh, we have something called the virtual service. Uh, this defines the rules that control how traffic is routed within the service mesh. So let's take a look at uh, once um, with, but with code. Uh, but well, in order to do that, uh, we need to know how to interact with CTRs with all these custom resource definitions. Uh, just because we already saw three libraries, but they are for internally for the Kubernetes API, well, for the internal resources. 
But what about uh, Istio or Prometheus or other system that also interacts with with Kubernetes? Well, uh, the client Go library uh, provides something called the, the dynamic client. The dynamic Go client in Kubernetes uh, allows you to interact with these custom resources without having to define their structure ahead of time. Uh, this is instead of strongly typed structures like pod or services, the dynamic client works with the unstructured data giving you the flexibility to work with any resource, including CRDs. So let's let's take a look of it uh, by watching the code. So we're going to create our first resource for Istio. It's going to be the getaway. And we are going to use the dynamic Go client, all right? So, well, the first part is to define uh, the libraries. And as you can see here, we are uh, using the dynamic uh, client go. And well, on the right side, let me just put uh, what, what is needed in order to create a getaway. Uh, this is the jam file uh, that is needed to, to create a getaway. So this is going to be now put here. Uh, in order to use the dynamic client, uh, you use a uh, uh, dynamic and then the method new for config. We pass the same config that we were using before. And then uh, this is the part where we define, we create an schema and then we make use of this client. First of all, uh, we need to find the schema uh, by by using the group version resource. As you can see on the right uh, side, you have that the group is networking istio.io. So we set it here. Then we have also the version. And well, the resource is a getaway. And as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, we are using the structured data. So as you can see, uh, we are going to use make use of this unstructured uh, struct uh, in order to create the, uh, the object. And in this way, we are going to pass uh, to the set instructed content, a map string interface with all this information that is needed. So once it's built this part, then we make use of the, this is the structure of how we, we call uh, the dynamic client. Set the resource that we already defined as a mini. We say the namespace to create it on the default one. And then uh, the object that we create that is getaway. And with some, uh, some options uh, for the creation, but in this case, will be the default ones. So let's try to do this. Go. Go. Okay, it mentioned that it's created. Let's take a look to the console. And yes, we have something. There we go. So this is about um, an alternative. Uh, we can use the dynamic uh, client. And also there is another way, uh, but this way uh, is not always available. Uh, it will depends on the custom result definition. In this case for, for Istio, it, it exists. And it's about using the Istio client. Um, the Istio client, uh, is a client that is written just for interacting with these resources that that are on Istio. So uh, if we take a look uh, to the web page, uh, they just announced it. Uh, it is from 2.9. So it's already there. And there are some community who is uh, actually working on it. Uh, this is well, an overview of, of the client goal library for Istio. Uh, one thing that provides us is the client, and also it provides us the schemas in order to uh, interact with the internal resources. So, well, let's take a look uh, in the code in order to structure and see each one of these parts. For this, uh, we are going to create the destination rules. Um, in the destination rules, let's just here. Uh, is where is where we make use of this uh, Istio client. The first part, this part is new. As you can see, uh, we have here defined the schemas, 
and then we have here define the the client for issue and then uh, as we go uh, at the bottom uh, we get the configuration and the sync configuration as we made it with 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 the client go is passed into the or new client for issue so this is passed and then we can make use of this client and then we can make use of their uh, objects in this case uh, in the Istio v1 alpha 3 that is defined here, we have the object needed for create a destination route. So we pass all the necessary information in order to create it, the version and also uh, what series will be mapped, etc. And then um, this is part of the Istio client where we define, it's a pattern where you define uh, the resources and then the action that is created. So let's create this very quick. We got this, this um, destination route. Okay, okay. Seems that there is no errors. So we 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 only remain uh two more things that is a virtual service and the service. As you can see, um, you you can imagine. Okay, I will need to to have like uh, a, client, a client for each uh, custom resource definition also for the for the client go, but no, there is a way to have them all in just one command or, or in one or in one client. And I'm going to show you how. So, uh, but first, uh, we are going to go briefly about what is a, a controller. Uh, a controller in Kubernetes is a just a Go program that continuously monitors a specific type of resource and ensures that the current state of the resource matches with the desired state. For example, in this image, where we have a controller that we control the temperature, and it will have a thermostat. So it will just look for the right temperature and just set it to the environment. So this is a brief about a controller, just in go and another how a controller is about. And then uh, Kubernetes already has a, also a library for building uh, controllers. There is something called a library called controller runtime. This library is already uh, optimized and also it's already uh, it's, it's built on top of the client go in order to to have that client that can that can have uh, multiple schemas and also that have the structure necessary for uh, building a controller. And uh, well, we have some uh, libraries also for building controllers specifically, and also something called operators that we will saw later that the code builder and operator SDK, and um, both are using that. Uh, well, very quickly, just in order to show you this part of the code, uh, we were missing to create the virtual service and the service. So in this part, uh, here is the configuration. We set all the necessary uh, libraries. This is the library for the runtime client. And this, this is the first part where we set the configuration. And then after that, we create a schema. In order to create a schema, we use the runtime library. And after that, uh, we add the both schemes, one for the Kubernetes uh, angle and also for the issue. And once we do that, then we create the client for the runtime and then it's ready to be used. So we can use uh, the Kubernetes objects and also we can use the the ones for Istio, and it will be no problem. You, we just use the create, and we pass all the necessary information, and then we will create that both uh, resources that we were missing. So let's go there. Let's see. So it's creating all the necessary for that. And well. And for that, uh, I think uh, we already have all the pieces necessary working together. Let's just make uh, just a quick uh, test in order to see that it's working. Uh, we go through the workload. Uh, okay, uh, running our workload. And then let's go to the index in order to see that 
it's working that we can see something. Okay, it's, it's working. It's it's a night and there are two applications that are running. One that is displaying ver the version that is working. In this case, this is the one for version two, and this is for version one. So the traffic is between five fifty fifty. It's set right here on the virtual service. So right now it's working this, fortunately. Mm -hmm. And well, this was about uh, all necessary for uh, building the components, uh, alternatives for using the, the CRDs with Go. And well, this is just a brief about um, controlling an operator. The controller just ensures the current state of a resource in Kubernetes. And uh, operator is more than that. It's just a type of controller but for custom resource definition. It knows how to create, configure, and manage application. It's typically stateful ones using Kubernetes API and Kubernetes tooling. So once we set all of this, the demo is just, uh, it's just by using the operator SDK. Right. in order to, to do all of this integrated. So for this, the demo will be, well, first, uh, just give me a second. So I'll do it this. Okay, this is the demo. The demo will consist on deploying a, a single operator where we are going to make use of, of all that we, we already saw. Uh, by bringing resources uh, one by one. We have the main con uh, code uh, define the schemas for, for, for Istio and also for, uh, for the Go client. And also for the new uh, custom resource definition that we are create creating. And this new scheme that we are defining is just inside here on API and on the types. So here, for example, uh, the way that it will work, uh, I, I'm going to define um, two deployments, uh, which we, they will have a version and also an image. Uh, I think instead of code, it will be better on this So uh, This is like the new custom uh, resource definition that I am creating. And in order to deploy this, uh, well, in order to build this, uh, there is a lot of, it, it is very easy because uh, Open SDK uh, already gives you the commands for uh, for for building this and also gives you all the scaffold of, of the project. So it's just uh, going through the documentation and going uh, step by step in order to do that. And it can be deployed uh, by creating the image and you just use the uh, make command. And also it can be deployed um, by using, uh, you can deploy it uh, locally also. This is what I, I want to mean. Uh, but first I'm going just to clean up uh, what I was doing here. Um, what I was, just let me clean this. Just delete uh, what I was building before in the tag, just in order to clean up and um, to have the others here. I'm just making sure that it's all clean. Uh, okay, seems to be all clean. And then let's just deploy this operator. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to deploy it, I'm going to run it just locally. With this command, make install run. Um, okay, it's, it's running. And yeah, I think it's working. And let's try to create a new resource. Uh, the, uh, the new resource is on config samples here. Let's just sit here. Okay. Sample. Um, 
apply on well or okay uh well <laughs> something that something <laughs> here's why we are doing the demo uh let's see if it was uh doing something if if it deployed the all the resources I was expecting. Well, it seems like it, it does something. Just finish uh, suddenly. <laughs> I think it's something that I I will need to take a look. But yeah, this is like uh all uh, steps and overview about uh how to make your own uh operator or controller or just an application in order to do split in traffic with Go and also with Istio. So this is all from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Guillermo. Uh, guys, maybe if someone has any questions, please uh, ask. You can use chat or unmute and ask the question. <laughs>